Coppola. CHP swapping out the primary unit once again. Now a brand new unit right behind him here as he starts to weave through traffic. Three units total of complete pursuit package as he prepares to possibly exit the 60 freeway coming up. Coming up on 7th Avenue, reportedly two people inside of that car. Again, appears to be an older model, Toyota Corolla. Once again, if you're just joining us on abc7.com and our ABC7 streaming apps, Chris Christie up in Air 7 HD with a CHP pursuit crossing into L.A. County. This all started in Riverside, Riverside County Sheriff's Department handing this off to CHP just a few minutes ago. Now three units right behind him as he refuses to pull over. Reportedly two people inside of the silver Toyota Corolla wanted for grand theft. And you see that nice sun from above. That is compliments of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department helping out here, trying to light him up, but he is refusing to pull over. In fact, he is all over the pavement, hovering between 70 and 90 miles per hour. Transitioning. Southbound, that's going to put him southbound 605, it looks like. Southbound 605 on a relatively uh, almost empty 605. Moving over to the right lane, maybe showing signs of another exit here, getting off the freeway, or perhaps, look at that, coming up really fast behind that car who basically cut him off there, and now he's looking for another opportunity to either move over to the right or just create some distance here. He's definitely going really fast, and you can see two people now in the front of that passenger vehicle heavily tinted windows on those side windows. Coming up on Rose Hills Road. Once again, three black and whites behind him. L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter pulling off of this pursuit. CHP now pulling in with their airship. A primary unit, secondary unit, and a third unit all ready to execute a felony stop if and when this comes to a 
conclusion, hopefully on the freeway. If not, they will, well, they will follow him right off the freeway. We'll see what happens here. In the meantime, he is still doing about 80 miles per, 80 miles per hour. Passing all the other traffic, whatever few cars there are out there. Again, a pretty empty 605. Closing in on 95 miles per hour. Once again, shifting over to the right lane, really just using all of the uh, available freeway that he's got, but there's really no traffic to weave around, and he's not really showing any signs of getting off now since he's transitioned onto the southbound 605. Just trying to play a little game of cat and mouse here with that primary unit who's closing in once again, only about six or seven car, six or seven car lengths behind him. Two other units behind them, and uh, again, this all started in Riverside County. Riverside County Sheriff handing this pursuit off about 10 minutes ago to the California Highway Patrol. Apparently, there is some information that the suspect may reside in uh, the South LA area. <coughs> Driver appears to have a cell phone in his hand. Starting to make out some side damage there on that front right quarter panel. Front left quarter panel, rather. And you can see he's now holding steady in that number three lane. So starting to uh, slow down slightly. Was doing about 95 to 100 just a minute ago. Now about 75 miles per hour. Just passing Telegraph. And there's the exit. <clears throat> they should put him on the five, I think. Yeah, that's the five. That'll put him on the southbound five. South, uh, no. Is that south? Yes, yeah, southbound five, southbound five. No, he got off at Florence. Bypassed the five freeway, exiting at Florence. Coming up on Florence Avenue, he's got a red light, and he's going through the red, through the red, making a wild left turn there, through the red light. All three CHP units following him through the red light, under the five freeway now. Eastbound Florence Avenue, just underneath the 5 Freeway. You can see him driving a bit slower now as he's on surface streets for the first time in this pursuit. Coming up on another red light. A little more traffic on Florence here. He might regret getting off of the 605. Had so much room to play with there. and Now he is really 
boxing, boxing himself in. CHP coming up right behind him here. And he is continuing to drive really erratically through these intersections. Here comes the pit. Looks like the go ahead has been given for a pit maneuver and he is right on his tail. A little too fast for a pit. We'll put the real time speed tracker up and you can see we're clocking him at about 75 miles per hour. So he may be getting real close, but he ain't gonna touch him until he slows down well below this. He's gotta slow down and now he's on the five freeway. So things can change here. Now speeding back up to about 80 miles per hour. Northbound five freeway, northbound five freeway. Having a lot of luck with traffic so far. Another relatively empty northbound five freeway at about 100 miles per hour. But those triple digit speeds are about to slow down because there's gonna be a few more brake lights here in the next couple of miles. Northbound five freeway, not a whole lot of traffic, but just a lot more cars to weave around. Coming up on Norwalk. Thank you. Uh, that looks off. He's, go he's going north, right? Oh. Oh, I stand corrected. He's actually on the southbound side. Southbound side of the five freeway, cutting off that big rig, taking the Firestone exit. Southbound five, southbound five, getting off at Firestone, speeding right through the intersection here. Look at this, he's gonna continue. Continuing southbound five. A wild maneuver there just to end up back on the five freeway, cutting off that big rig trailer. CHP still maintaining their distance here. You can see the flashing lights right behind him at 95 miles per hour. Indications that there may be a female driver behind the wheel here and yet another exit getting off once again traffic pulling away from him. All right, he's got a decision to make here at Carmenita. Or is he gonna go through it? No, he makes the northbound turn. Northbound turn onto Carmenita. A red light here, trying to split those lanes. And he's getting back on the five, back on the northbound side of the five freeway. So we are now on the northbound side. I said northbound earlier, he was on the southbound side. He is now jumped over to the northbound side of the five freeway. And if he is indeed from South LA, this will put him in the general direction of where he may have originated from. But that is preliminary unconfirmed information. CHP still taking this as long as it takes, but uh, again, they brought this out of Riverside County, so that's where they picked it up. In fact, the minute he crossed into LA County, CHP basically took it over. Riverside said, you guys could have it.
continuing northbound side of the five freeway. Again, a silver Toyota Corolla fleeing the California Highway Patrol at a high rate of speed. This all started on the 60 freeway out of Riverside, ended up on the southbound five. Now we're going northbound on the five freeway, heading back towards the LA Metro. And you can see he is continuing, or he or she, I should say, indications it may be a female driver. Uh, refusing to pull over here, doing a lot of lane shifting. Hello, I'm Mark Brown joining Chris Christie, uh, Chris Christie and Air 7 HD as we continue to cover this pursuit involving the California Highway Patrol and a stolen car believed to be a Toyota Corolla. You see the speeds there pretty high, 84, 85 miles an hour on the northbound Thank five you. freeway. Chris Christie, uh, what is ahead at this point uh, of this uh, driver? Is there any traffic at all? Hey there, Mark. I'm back up with you, and we are uh, on the northbound side of the 5 freeway. A little bit of traffic coming up ahead of him here, but uh, so far, and I keep saying him, it appears there may be a female behind the wheel here, now doing triple-digit speeds and encountering some of those brake lights that I mentioned just a second ago. You can see a big truck now in front of her. Uh, and more traffic to contend with the further north she gets here. Uh, on the southbound side of the 5 freeway was a different story. Even on the 605, it was relatively empty. Ever since we've been on the northbound side of the 5 freeway, though, things are starting to slow her down. And again, we just have information, preliminary information, that this vehicle may have originated in the <coughs> South L.A. area. All right, and it's, it's interesting to see the... CHP getting so close to this vehicle. They don't normally pursue this closely, do they, when they're, when they're on a freeway, especially at these speeds? They seem to be pacing themselves. There's times where I've heard them intentionally pull back on her a little bit, especially when there are other motorists in the vicinity, and then you'll see them close in on her a little bit, whether they can try and peek inside the vehicle here and there and try and get a little more intel. Now she's exiting the freeway, coming up on, I believe this is going to be... Another freeway exit, no. That's Lindell Avenue. Coming up on Lindell here. Or Lakewood, Lakewood Boulevard, rather. Lakewood mm -hmm. Boulevard. And a, no, a left. left turn. Left turn onto Lakewood Boulevard. Uh, but typically when they pull up right behind her, Mark, it seems like they're just trying to get a better glimpse. At one point, she was exiting the freeway really fast. I almost thought that... He was going to try a pit maneuver because he pulled up right up behind her as she was exiting the freeway. But it turned out that was not to be, and it was going way too fast anyway. So now that we're on surface streets for only the second time here, we'll see how things play out. Mm -hmm. Look at that jump in the curb here, acting much more erratically. In fact, this is a textbook case of why they really would prefer that she stayed on the freeway. Wow. Now doing a oh, U-turn on Lakewood Boulevard, going the wrong way on Lakewood Boulevard. Wow. Uh, luckily, a recipe no opposing for traffic right now. Hopefully, she'll get back into the, uh, at least shifting into the, over the right to the, lane. Yep, shifting over to the correct side there. All right. And now, maybe getting back on the freeway. She's the clearly freeway. making this up as she goes along. These all the, appear to be very random turns, random moves, another random U-turn, maybe looking for an opportunity to get back on the freeway here. Good spot for a pit right here, too, isn't it? Yeah, and she slowed down just enough. That might have been uh, maybe one of their first real opportunities mm -hmm. because I got to be honest, she's been doing pretty. Uh, she's been doing a pretty good clip ever since we joined this pursuit. In fact, at times approaching 100 miles per hour on the freeway, the driving on the surface streets has been a whole different story. Not entire, not exactly uh, record-breaking speeds, but just really dangerous maneuvers the minute she gets off the freeway. So this is the case where we say it so often. We much prefer, we, along with the California Highway Patrol, much prefer to, you know, endure this pursuit on the freeway, regardless of the outcome, because it's just a much safer situation for everybody, despite the fact that there is traffic on the freeway. It's still safer than a surface street where you have, you know, pedestrians and all kinds of other variables. Yep, and now back on the freeway, the speeds are higher. Um, the, the, you, I think you called it in terms of uh, this driver, and you, the, the belief is that she is female. Uh, is making this up as she goes along. 
uh, which is leading to, you know, this, this kind of wrong way stuff, which can be really dangerous. If you're improvising, you don't have a plan necessarily of even where you're trying to get to, uh, that can be troubling. Uh, so approaching the 5 and 605 interchange, she can go either way. It looks like she's going for the 605. On and off the freeway here, going southbound. Uh, away from South LA again. We were just kind of using that as a possible destination, but in fact, she is transitioning here. We'll see where this puts her. It does look like she's going to go back northbound on the 605. So you called it, Mark, getting onto the 605, going back north, basically doing a circle uh, using the local freeway system here. She's been on the 605 before. She had gotten off of the 60 freeway and had gone, had gone south southbound on the 605. Mm -hmm. uh, and now she's entering the northbound side this is a good of the 605. I apologize. My voice is on borrowed time, Mark, but you can <laughs> clearly see she's now transitioning. And there comes that primary unit once again, mm -hmm. closing that distance behind her and uh, maybe, again, looking for a possible pit opportunity. All right. Well, there's a little more traffic in front of her now. Yeah, um, too busy for a pit that, there. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do that when there's other vehicles around. You don't want to hit the other vehicles. You don't want to cause uh, injury to anyone, including the suspect uh, that we might add. Everybody wants to have this end with nobody getting hurt and with the suspect safely in custody and the uh, pursuing officers safely able to take that suspect into custody. Stolen car. Do we know anything about anything else that might be associated with this? Uh, the original want was grand theft. We've observed very uh, heavily tinted windows there that are making it very diff difficult to see in the rear. But the best information that we have from law enforcement oh. is that there are two people inside the front of that, uh, that car. In fact, we've been able to visually confirm that. Uh, there is somebody in the passenger seat as well. Now, eastbound Telegraph Road. Getting on to Telegraph at, a, again, a very high rate of speed here for, for this area. And now a random left turn there. I think she even had the red light there. So just very concerning driving uh, the minute she gets off the freeway. Very worrisome. You saw that move earlier, getting onto the wrong side of Lakewood Boulevard, now pulling into a much more residential street. This is going to be, look at that, Flossmoor with a lot of cross traffic. Flossmore Doing about 35, Avenue 40 miles per hour on what can't be more than a 20 mile per hour speed limit street. Right. And people who live in this area, if you are uh, in the area of Jersey Avenue and uh, Flossmore Road and Whittier or, or the few blocks around here, please stay in your homes. Uh, the danger here is if somebody is out on the street, uh, she could uh, lose control of the vehicle at any time or something could happen. You don't want to be uh, out there when... Uh, when this vehicle's involved in this pursuit. Now back yeah, onto Telegraph all Road. these reds. That was that container, that, that truck we saw as we got, as she got off the freeway. Passing yeah, on. a couple close calls here. And again, taking these left turns through the red light uh, and all at a pretty dangerous clip there. Now doing about 70 miles per hour on Telegraph, oh. almost double the speed limit here, passing Pioneer on a relatively empty Telegraph Road. One thing about Telegraph is that it is largely an industrial road so if you had to pick a surface street this might be the one and uh, also a good opportunity in a case like this for a possible spike strip mm -hmm. if they could set up in advance and have the opportunity that might be something we can expect here wow the speeds are high and uh, you I, I wince every time she gets to a point where there's a, a an intersection and hope that at least the light is with her uh, it was in this case it was in the last couple of cases it was when you talk about this high speed you don't want her going against a running a red at these kind of speeds because you know just the result could be absolutely catastrophic she's getting into the right turn lane let's see if she makes a right here if she continues straight continuing straight looks like she has a green light or had it CHP now with their airship still overhead. You can see that night sun occasionally coming off of her and then occasionally back on. Whether that's intentional or not could be sometimes very difficult, at a high, especially at a high rate of speed, to keep that night sun steady. But maybe they're just trying to take the pressure off slightly by taking that night sun off of her. But it does perform several uh, uh, goals, and one of them is actually giving other motorists in the area uh, at least a clue uh, that this is heading in their direction, aside from the lights and sirens on the ground down there. But still a relatively uh, slow night. And I say slow, I mean relatively empty night on Telegraph Road here. 
fixing for a right turn, and that's going to be a right northbound turn onto Laurel Avenue into a into a shopping center. Shopping center is uh, what is it? Almost ten o'clock. It's ten o'clock basically. Uh, the shopping center it's a might Walmart. be. It's oh okay. It might be closed or closing Walmart, down. What are they late doing? Night. They're open. There they go. Oh, two boy. two oh, pa boy. a passenger and the driver Female both driver, running for it into the Walmart. Passenger. Both running into the Walmart. The vehicle keeps rolling. Wow. And now we have a foot pursuit. Look at that. The CHP officer trying to stop the vehicle. That car crashing into that post. And now they have to enter this Walmart with a whole different set of challenges here. Uh, obviously they are prepared to use force, but there are shoppers inside of that Walmart obviously and the uh, the oh my god the opportunity obviously mm -hmm. for uh, collateral damage here is obviously severe so it's like they let's got hope the that those two are not armed let's as they, as let's they were uh, as they were running inside they uh, grabbed it looked like they got really close to the driver it looks like that's her somebody's down, down there somebody's down no shoes yeah that might be the driver uh, yeah it looks like she's being apprehended right now all right, so that's the good. driver's that's good. at least one person. The driver is hooked at this point. Now they're trying to get that passenger. I couldn't get a good description of him because it was, it was uh, uh, just a couple of seconds before the guy was back inside the store or was inside the store, running away. Well, thankfully they only have to wor have to worry about him for the moment. And mm -hmm. as I as I look at the posture here, it almost appears as though the situation inside is. Uh, Maybe, well, I don't want to speculate too much. Clearly, that female driver is in custody. Mm -hmm. What's going on inside the store? Basically, anybody's guess as shoppers start to spill out. These folks probably in line at the cash register when all of this occurred. And now there is a uh, presumably either a search or a foot pursuit inside the store. Right. Okay. Well, hopefully, we'll get a result here pretty quickly. She did not make it inside the store. Uh, somebody was somebody grabbed. You got two female CHP officers now who have patted her down, have her in custody. They're going to put her up against the car and do, I, I guess, a secondary search now. Uh, but uh, let's go. Let's keep an eye. We're going to do a loop store. here, Mark. I've got information come from our assignment desk that the male passenger has made his way through the store towards the rear of the Walmart, and we might see some activity. Uh, in, the, uh, in those loading docks or in that receiving section there mm. in the back of the store. So we'll see what entrances or exits are back there. It looks like there is some oh. CHP activity in there. Is Do we have somebody? There he is. Yep, I saw an officer holding up. You probably did too at the same time I did. An officer holding up what looked like four fingers. Yep, uh, code which four. Means code four, which means uh, things are under control here. But look how He's far he got. He's hiding behind that truck there. Yeah, he was trying to basically fled right through the store. Uh, pretty smart of him. Came out the other side of the Walmart in the rear near the loading docks here and was looking for a hiding spot. <clears throat> but it looks like they were able to keep up with him. Perhaps even with the help of maybe even people inside the store or employees. Who knows? It'll be interesting to see what actually happened in there. But in any event... I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, being told that witnesses were actually uh, following him back there, pointing in the rear of the store, and mm -hmm. that's apparently how they were able to rendezvous with the suspect here in the uh, that back parking lot there. All right. Well, uh, that's thanks to uh, the cooperation of the public, the folks, the customers in Walmart. Doesn't uh, take a lot of detective work. If you're a customer, you see somebody running in the store being pursued by the police. You say, there he goes, and uh, they know where to go, and they found him. Interesting that he got all the way out of the back of the store. I used to, to work in grocery stores. Typically, the back is locked, closed and locked. Now, why are they running in this direction? This There's is a report. I've just heard it. There's a report that somebody else is hiding. Hmm. Uh, somebody else is hiding in a different area. Whether they are connected to that vehicle, there's another person being detained. Wow. Another person deep, another person being detained, and now you have to wonder, and perhaps we'll have to go back and re-rack that video as this pursuit came to an end in front of the Walmart. Uh, this almost looks more like the suspect that I remember seeing, but you mm -hmm. know, your eyes can play tricks with you. It all happens so fast, and uh, that other suspect in the rear of the store may pass may possibly be the wrong guy. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll find out because uh, that is interesting. 
uh, I only we we only saw two people get out, and it's not like the, you know, we we followed the car for a second or two while it while the CHP officer uh, uh, tried to stop it, and then it ran into a a, a parking a post there. So there was nobody else left in that car that could have run out without them chasing them. We saw two people get out, so maybe they do have one of those people was is the wrong is the wrong uh, guy. Yeah, I think let's go ahead and uh, Rob, let's go ahead and re-rack that video really quick and see exactly uh, what happened here because I think we'll get a better look now. Gray pants. Look at that. Light a white gray shirt, pants. White light shirt. pants. Looks like light gray pants. You're right. There's definitely the female driver that Definitely. was taken into custody. No sign that anybody else got out of that vehicle, as far as I could tell. No. And uh, I don't right. know which suspect actually fit that description. I'll have to go back now and, and <laughs> we'll see. Have to Let's see, go ahead and see come the back out live here. I think the first guy matched the description better with the pants. It doesn't. I'm not sure about this guy here. Um. First guy almost appeared a little. Almost, I want to say a little too heavy set. Yeah. But this might be. I want to get a better look at those pants because they you mentioned that they were very light gray pants. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. The person I saw looked a bit younger, but again, it's difficult to tell here. Can we re rack that uh, the, 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 the end of the pursuit again? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, one more time, Rob, if you can. We'll go ahead and, uh, okay. Uh, well, this guy's okay. wearing a hoodie. Unless he grabbed okay, a hoodie cool. off a rack in there and, and tried to blend in, I don't think that's the guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost wondering if either of those people are the mm -hmm. uh, passenger, to be honest with you, but the first one, okay. Uh, yeah, it looks more like the, well, it's hard to tell. It doesn't look like this it guy is hard to tell. that we're looking at that, that, that we were just over. Um, is the other one already yeah. in a patrol car? That's yeah, that guy's got dark the... pants and a hoodie on, so I don't think that's the guy. Couldn't have changed clothes that quickly, and, uh, right. and frankly, he looks like he's got more hair than the other guy. I agree. That we saw jumping out of the car. So that may just be a different sort of situation. They do still have him in handcuffs, though, which is interesting. So that first suspect is in a car. Mm -hmm. Another suspect now being detained and placed into a patrol car and it'll be up to up to these uh, officers now to figure it out just to give you an idea of where we are here uh, and I'm losing I've just lost my uh, my monitor guys I apologize Mark all right yeah no problem so uh, yeah as you were mentioning there there are one female two males now that have been detained one of them, from our vantage point, does not match the description of the guy seen bailing from the passenger side of the car. One of them pretty much did, although by, he, we can't compare him now because he's inside of a, a police vehicle. Those are the people that got, that, that, that got out of the car. The woman running barefoot tackled pretty much immediately before she got into the store. The male got inside the store, and then one person was uh, detained in the rear of the store, another off to the side a little bit. Uh, we we saw that yeah here's here's a different this is a different guy he's got it's more a hair guy. yeah it's a totally that different guy that is not guy. him that's uh, not him that's not the guy that jumped out of the car so there, he may be it's he may have other troubles pointing but. out here that when somebody runs through a Walmart and everybody else starts scattering multiple people likely came through all different exits of the store it would mm -hmm. not be surprising at all considering all of the confusion uh, during the commotion that uh, there are now multiple people looking for a spot to hide. You never know what's actually, uh, you know, happening. It could be an active shooter. It could be any number of situations. You're just running for your life in many cases. So I think the confusion is very understandable here. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear that that second suspect is not the suspect that we are, uh, that we were focused on. I think that uh, if anything, that first suspect uh, in the white shirt may have fit the description more, but I, again, I, I, I now would have to see that one more time to mm -hmm. see if those pants matched up, or it could very well be the fact that, uh, or the possibility that maybe there's another outstanding suspect here. Yeah, that would be uh, strange, but you know, stranger things have happened. <laughs> there's all kinds of weird things that have gone on. So, you know, uh, we, we, we do see the foot bail, and clearly uh, the female driver, the male passenger, the male white, uh, looks like white sneakers, light gray pants, white t-shirt, somewhat heavy set. 
uh, closely cropped hair uh, who got out. Uh, the car I should mention crashes. that CHP, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say that CHP is being assisted here by the Whittier Police Department, who has basically surrounded this entire Walmart in pretty, uh, pretty dramatic fashion here. They've done it in a pretty short amount of time. A lot of units down there, and uh, they are now assisting CHP. This is the Walmart at Telegraph and Painter Avenue, by the way. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, what we do know is that the posture of law enforcement here seems to have... Uh, gotten a lot more calm, a lot more uh, 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 indicative of this whole thing being over. The question is how we're going, how we or they are going to sort between the two men that are now in custody and whether this person is connected in some way or whether he was uh, a, 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 an innocent bystander or whether he is involved in something else that we don't know anything about. Um, you know, stranger things have happened. There looks like they're going through a backpack that he had, that he has with him or some sort of a something. Uh, but anyway, Very peculiar. yeah, the, the chase has ended. No one has been hurt that we know of. We haven't been inside the Walmart, but uh, it appears nobody's been hurt. The posture of law enforcement indicates it's all over. And uh, it looks like Whittier is where this pursuit has ended after quite some time and some dangerous uh, driving on city streets and freeways. Uh, Chris Christie and Mark Brown reporting for ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, we'll be on the air at 11 o'clock. Hope you'll join us.